hello everyone and welcome to my channel so we continue with our revision in this video we're going to look at question four part b so we'll start with part b so part a is uh, state the newton's first second and third law for those you can uh, find out from your book you can uh, search for them on google okay so part b is saying um a 70 kg box is slid along the floor by a 400 newtons force as shown find the acceleration of the box okay so in this equation uh, since we have not been uh, given the coefficient of friction or depending on what we've been given let's just write what we've been given so in the one we have the mass which is 70 kg and then we also have the force which is 400 newtons okay so uh, we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration and um, what we've been asked to find is the acceleration so we make the acceleration the subject of the formula or we just key in the values that we have so the force has to be newtons so we have the force in newtons and the mass has to be in kgs which are the si units so here from this we can say force which is 400 newtons is equal to the mass which is 70 times the acceleration and then over 70 over 70 so our acceleration will be uh, 400 over 70 is 400 over 70 let me just get the calculator okay so 400 divide 7 0 okay so our acceleration will be 5.71 so uh, 5.71 meters per square second okay so that is our acceleration okay um and then part c let me just check this down so part c says differentiate between momentum and impulse okay so we know that momentum denoted by letter p is equal to mass times the velocity and uh, it is measured in kg meter per second which is mass times velocity so momentum is simply the product of um, the mass and the velocity of a body or the momentum of a body is a product of its mass times its velocity and then impulse impulse denoted as letter j times impulse is equal to force times the change in time so impulse is force times time meaning its units would be newton second so impulse is a product of a force times the change in time and the units for impulse are newtons per i mean newton seconds so that is the difference okay and then this other part part d you can write part d from here it says a bullet 10 a, a 10 grams bullet accelerates to 400 meters per second okay so we have the bullet we have the mass which is uh we can call it mass one is equal to 10 grams and then accelerates to so the velocity of the bullet is so we can say v one is 400 
meters per second after being fired from a gun with a mass of 200 uh, 2 kgs okay so we have the mass of the gun we can say mass 2 is equal to 2 kgs so 2.0 calculate the momentum of the gun and the momentum of the bullet so what we know is that okay, we don't have v2 we don't have v2 yet so what we know is that before firing the gun the momentum of the bullet which is momentum one is equal to zero because there was no velocity there and the momentum of the gun is also zero which is momentum two is also zero so here for the momentum of the gun we are going to put zero and then the momentum of the bullet since we have the mass and the velocity here so p2 that is when the bullet is in motion to this velocity there p2 is equal to um the mass which should be converted in in um, uh, kilograms so the mass converting 10 kg 10 10 grams to kgs we are going to have 10 divide 1000 so which is our mass times our velocity which is 400 okay so this will give us we can cancel this and that and that that and that so this will give us four kgs meter per second so this is our uh, momentum two this is our momentum for the bullet and then the second one for the second one there the velocity of the recoiling gun so a recoiling gun is uh, a gun that is moving after firing if you have a gun and then you fire a bullet so the bullet will go in this direction so a recoiling gun is just when a gun goes in the opposite direction and we know that um, when you look at the law of conservation of momentum you know that the momentum before collision which is the initial momentum should equal the final momentum meaning the initial momentum here will be the momentum of the gun which is uh, so this is initial so the the uh, momentum of the gun and the momentum of the bullet before the gun was fired which which will be because before the gun was fired, uh, the bullet was stationary, meaning there was no velocity, and the gun was also stationary, there was no velocity. Yes, so the momentum in the initial position will be zero, because the momentum of the gun and the momentum of the bullet was um, uh, zero there, there was no velocity, so zero is equal to the final momentum, which is the momentum of the bullet, So which is P1 plus P2, which is the momentum of the of the gun. And then our P1 will be 4, which is what we have here. 4, we already have the momentum of the bullet, plus our P2 will be the mass of the gun which is 2 kgs so 2 times the velocity backwards which we are calling v2 and then this should equal 0 okay so if we take this the other side there we are going to have negative 
2 v2 is equal to 4 and then over negative 2 over negative 2 so our v2 is equal to negative 2 meters per second so the negative shows that the gun was moving in the other direction with the, the velocity through there okay so that's it for this video and thanks for watching